Hi, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your January 2021 full moon reading for you. Now, I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you are interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, just a reminder not to engage with anybody in the comment box below that says they, they are me, that asks you if you would like a reading from them, that is a fraud, that is a scam. I will not be soliciting you for readings at all. I'm actually close to private readings at this time, so do not engage with them. And when I am open to public readings, then it is listed in the description box below. I won't, I never contact anyone. Okay, so fantastic. So now let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. Now let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels. Oh, goodness. Okay. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. So let me move these over just a bit so you can see a bit better. Is that better? Okay, brilliant. All right, now let's see your chakra energy for this time. Now this is going to be where what chakras are a little bit blocked going to cause you a little bit of trouble during this full moon like where you need to pay just a little bit more attention in meditation or just in your day-to-day -day life how will pisces be affected by january 2021 full moon how will pisces be affected by the january 2021 full moon how will pisces be affected by the january 2021 full moon angels and spirit guides show me clearly Guide this reading and show me clearly. Awesome. Now we have here rebirth, which is the earth star chakra located six inches below your feet. This is saying that there's a transformative time here. You are, 
you're connecting with your rooted self, but you're also going to find it hard to really feel at times like you really fit, like things are absolutely making sense. But there's a sense of transformation, of power, of understanding, of bounty coming forward, but there's a resistance to it. So the transformative time is intense for you, most definitely, but it's almost as if at times like you get so close and then you feel like you're, you're taking a few set steps back or that you're actually slingshotted back. And so there's a balance that's needed. And then we have here universal light, which is the soul star chakra located six inches above your crown. This is you. This is you as the light of creation, the light of, of hope, of power, this brilliance shining from you, radiating out. And what's going to be hard during this time for you is what I'm really saying is, oh, is that it's almost a sense of I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be this light or I'm not you know, powerful enough, or I've made too many mistakes, or I've done too many things wrong to have this light shine forward within me, to have this power be a part of me. So here you're coming so close to a rebirth, but there's almost a sense of, I've messed up too many times. Like, you know, the universe is watching, divinity is watching, I myself, you know, am watching, and I know what I've done wrong. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to get to that place that I want to be. And what's really funny here is that the full moon is in Leo. And the full moon in Leo brings our ego like right to the forefront. And even though we might think that it's very humble to think, oh, I'm not worthy of this, it's actually very ego dri driven. And so that's going to be your way, Pisces. And it's going to be such a flip side from everybody else because everybody else is going to be yelling and screaming that they're the best in the whole entire world. And you're going to have moments of that too. But there's also going to be the sense of my light isn't shining bright enough or I'm not changing the way that I'm supposed to, so I'm not going to be worthy. And, and that's going to be the battle that you have here because it's going to be like, well, I didn't break that addiction or, you know, I lose my temper too quickly or I'm not at the job that I want to be at or, you know, have you seen the state of the world and I'm not getting ahead and it's all so frustrating. Those frustrations come forward and Pisces, the way you deal with a lot of this is you internalize and you let it eat away at you. And this is a sense here of, of needing to change that most definitely. Now, the left-hand side is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So we have the seven of pentacles, the five of wands, the five of cups. Yeah. And the knight of wands, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, very much connecting you with the Leo full moon. Five is transformative. It, it just is. It's a number of freedom. It's a number of things being accomplished more quickly than you thought they would be. And you could think this is going to take a forever and it doesn't take a forever. So it's considered a win. But there's a need for patience here because it's not going to be as fast as you would like it, but it's not going to take as long as you thought it would. Okay. So there's this, this time for you is, it's just wrought with duality. It's wrought with the sense of one thing is this way, one thing is that way, and they both seem so polarizingly opposite, but they're both, you know, screaming for attention by you within yourself. So that's going to be interesting. You then have the Queen of Wands. Yeah, you're really connected to this Leo, to this Leo full moon. The Four of Wands, the Devil, which is Capricorn energy, time frame December 22nd to January 19th. And then we have the Ten of Swords. The Chariot, Cancer Energy. Time frame is June 21st to July 22nd. The Star, Aquarius Energy. Time frame January 20th to February 18th. This also connects you with the New Moon in Aquarius. Earth Sign Energy, right here with the Knight of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles connecting you with the Full Moon in Virgo on the 27th of February. So are you affected by this moon? absolutely stinking lutely this full moon takes you for a ride because it takes you on a ride with a night this sense of moving forward and it takes you on this ride of of power and assertion with the the king and the queen so so things get real intense real easy things get real powerful real fast all right so we're starting off with surrendering to the divine and we have this very strong connection with the goddess bridget during this time. Now, whether the goddess Bridget is a, a mythological symbol for you or a religious symbol, that's completely up to you. But the power that she brings forward is poetry, healing, and smith work. And this is a time where you're embracing the healing through poetry, through beauty, through, you know, things coming together, through seeing the art where others kind of overlook it. 
and also through Smith work, which I find very funny that this is coming forward because the Smith work is, you know, the forging of new beginnings, of, of putting things together when they don't necessarily want to fit together. And that's what I'm seeing here. It's like a sword being forged. You, you heat it up till it becomes red hot. Then you bang it, you know, till it's the shape that you want it to be. And you start fitting all pieces together and you start smoothing things out and you start shaping it the way that you want to, or you shape it earlier. I can't really remember. Here, you're going to find your power is through surrendering, through this forging time, through this change that is moving you forward, through this power that is a part of you. Because not only is this the wolf moon, because that is what the almanac says it is, but it is also the rowan moon. And the rowan moon brings with it protection, strength, and success in new ventures. So there is success in the new. But because this is such a polarizing time for you, because, you know, it's just, it's never going to be straightforward during this time. And I know that that's aggravating. And I know that that's not what you want to hear. But that's what divinity is showing me. And so... There's success in new ventures, but Leo is a fixed sign, and it's the sun. So it's represented by the sun. And the moon reflects the sun's light. And for you, Pisces, you're represented by the moon, okay? So during this time, to have the sun taking over, or really being prominent in, in your element, okay? Because you're represented by the moon in the, in the major arcana, it becomes a bit overwhelming for you. Because you're bringing the the power of the day, that endless chatter, that endless, you know, noise, you're bringing it into the night. And you need to really have that disconnect, have that time where you just kind of unplug, unwind, and let yourself be. And this full moon, it brings the drama. It says here, don't let pride get in the way. It's the ego. Pride is the ego. Pride is, I will show them. I will be that success that I desperately want everybody to see that I can be. I can, you know, do everything. This is a time where we will happily overreach, bite off too much, you know, more than we can chew, take things on. And a part of ourselves is going to say, and that's a really bad idea, but we're going to be able to do it. We're going to sit there and say, oh, I'm, I'm going to be able to handle it all. And we're not. <laughs> we're not. We're going to find ourselves being overwhelmed and, and not enjoying this time the way that we should. So this is a time where the drama, again, it runs rampant. And you're not a drama person, Pisces. Okay, when you're in alignment with yourself, you like things calm, you like things steady, you like things quiet, you like things peaceful. And so here, you are, you're going to be thrown off your game is what's going to happen if you don't rein this in. So during this moon, everybody wants to be under the spotlight, wants to be the center stage, look at me, look at me, look at me. And this is going to be your way of kind of combating that because it's, it's so ego driven that, that it gets you mad. And you can find yourself getting mad at certain things during this time, and you're not going to know exactly why. But the spotlight here is saying, since everybody wants to be center stage, nobody's listening, everybody's feeling ignored. So this is a sense, this is a time where you need to step back and say, what is it that I want? Because the center stage isn't going to work for you. The being ignored, okay, we can fall into that category, but that's going to be aggravating very, very quickly. And you're not going to want the pity party. Like some signs are going to fall into this pity party kind of sense. That's not going to be you. You want something more. You want that, that, new, that new venture. You want that new success to move you forward. And there's patience here. There's patience for that fire that moves you. There's something that's being built here, okay, that, that leads you out of a place of, oh, my gosh, another lesson to learn. Oh, my gosh, you know, another hurdle to jump. There's success, and there really is success and triumph in the public arena. And so during this time, because you're going to have such strong self-doubt, because you're going to sit there and question everything 15 million different times, there is a sense here that you're going to be really introspective. So when everybody else is like, I can't give up, I have to do it exactly this way, you know, my way or the highway, you're going to have those moments, most definitely. You don't kind of get out unscathed, though I wish you, you did. I laugh because it's like you get so close and then you get pulled back in. And, and it's, just, it's just a little bit of a dance during this time. But what you're going to find is that if you connect with the waters of you, if you sit there and let the quiet shine through, shine through all the chatter, you will find that you step back and you reevaluate re and you really look at 
where you want to be, what it is that you desire. And you start to embrace the creativity, the spontaneity, the romance, the fun-loving nature of this moon. Because this moon is ruled by the heart. And Chris Leo is ruled by the heart. And so it's going to be very important for you to listen to your heart. And your default, Pisces, when you get overwhelmed, is to step out of the world and listen to your heart. So it's like the best thing to do. But it's going to take a little bit here to trust yourself and say, this is right. I'm not making a mistake. I'm moving forward this way. There is power in this decision. You now move to the new moon in Aquarius, which is on the 11th of February. Now, this brings new beginnings. This brings a new start into your life. You're seeing this portal, this way of moving forward, this transitional, powerful stage into prosperity, into new business ventures, into a different way of looking at things and also a way of seeing the interconnectedness of the wealth and the bounty that is a part of your life. And that will be a part of your life. It's very interesting because a lot of signs have been having to deal with poverty during this time, a sense of I can't. Here, you don't have that poverty coming forward, but you do have the fives. So the fives bring with it a bit of chaos because always a bit of chaos comes before the freedom opens up the doors, before our vibrational energy is elevated and before we stand in our truth. So here you get pulled in too many different directions. You want too many different things for yourselves or too many different people want too many different things from you. And you will tend, because it is the way of Pisces, you will tend to become a little bit melancholy and look at everything that you've done wrong instead of everything that you've done right. This is a time where you need to change your mind and change your life because it's like the devil's in the details, quite literally for you. You will find that the chaos, the self-doubt, the anger, the apprehension lies within thinking about all the little details and not kind of jumping forward, not letting yourself heal. And so when it says here, bring love into the situation, that bringing of that love, that looking at the waters of your truth, the embracing the passions of your soul, that's going to be so important. Pouring those waters forward because you live in the waters of emotion, that is going to be your key for this time. Not to say I'm completely emotion and not to say that I'm completely logic, but to find that middle ground because I firmly believe that we are emotional beings. That's why so much of human nature and so much of human self, yes, you can say we have patterns, but we are also driven by emotion in such a profound way that at times it doesn't make sense. So here, when you bring that love into the situation, when you have your heart and your mind really talking to each other, really you know, diving deeper, you will start to see yourself pouring forward a dream, pouring forward you know, a desire, pouring forward the sense of, I'm fighting for this, I'm embracing this, and I'm moving forward in this truth. It brings you to the full moon in Virgo, which very much affects your public arena. You may find, for a lot of you Pisces, that the closer and closer you get to the public arena, um, not the public arena, but you get to Virgo, the more outgoing you are publicly, the more you know, kind of assertive you are within your dreams, the more you're kind of getting a handle on things, a pattern on things, a, a schedule to things, and seeing the doors start to open. So here it says you're good enough with the full moon in Virgo. And this always aggravated me when I first started to use these cards. And I know I say it every single time because it was just such a passionate, powerful, visceral reaction to being told I was good enough, which should be a nice thing. But I found it patronizing. I found it aggravating. I was at a really low point in my life. I was overwhelmed, stressful. I was, you know, everything wasn't going the way that I had visioned for it, my life. And to be told I was good enough. It was like, it's okay, just sit there in the corner. You know, everything, like, either you'll just settle or things will eventually work out. But it felt like stopping fighting. But it's exactly the opposite. To be called you're good enough. To be called you're good. Especially if that's something you've been fighting against your whole life. Being good enough. Being told you're not good enough being told you'll never add up, you'll never be as good as everybody else, you're deficient, you're, you're, no, you're just not, you just don't have it type of thing. It could be from childhood, you could have a parent that was you know, verbally, mentally abusive that way. You could have a teacher, you could have you know, a friend. It could also be from a partner that you trusted them, you loved them, and you never felt good enough. So when a card has the, the brazen nonsense to say you're good enough, you reject it because there's a part inside of you that thinks you aren't. 
Here, it is knowing, without a shadow of a doubt, that you are not a mistake. Stardust runs through your veins. Divinity created you. You have the God said hidden within you because Brahma said, I hide it within you because you'll never look there. And now it's starting to find that the answers that we seek, the power that we want, lies within. And you are not a mistake. You are enough. And you will always be enough to move yourself forward in your dreams. It may take longer than you anticipated. Absolutely. It may not be where you thought you would end up. Absolutely. But it will be a powerful truth for you. And it will be divinely guided. Because what you're going to see here is that at the end of all of this, there is a sense of being reborn. And there is a sense of knowing that you are that universal light that connects you to your angels, to your spirit guides, to divinity. And it brings you to the spirit animals of January, which I know we're only in for like a blink of an eye. But we have the owl spirit and we have the bear spirit. The bear spirit says, take time out. The owl spirit says, you see clearly now. It is time to take time out, to ground yourself in strength, to challenge your confidence and to channel your confidence. And also, this is a symbol of healing through solitude, through meditation, and through rest, through connecting with what it is that you're planting within your world. Do you want it to take root? Do you want it to grow? And how do you want it to grow? Where do you want it to grow? Because there's patience here. Patience because divinity is going to deliver in a way that you didn't anticipate. The owl spirit says you see clearly now, and you do see clearly. It's time to face the shadows. It's time to look at the shadows and see the wisdom within the silence, see the power within the unknown. It's time to hold on to your truth, and it's time to look beyond the masks of this world, the kind of facade that everybody's perfectly happy to let you believe is the truth. And it's even beyond your own facade, and to say, no, now I go for authenticity. And as you have that power of authenticity leading you forward, you're connecting with the outer spirit, and the outer spirit is the spirit animal of February. And it says, you are never alone. You are never alone. That is powerful. It's kind of scary, too, because you always have your angels and your spirit guides with you. You have one, one otter here, one otter here. There is power that is moving you forward. There is blessing that is coming in. You're being guided during this time, and this is a fantastic time to connect with your spirit guides. You know, give your spirit guide a name. Why? Because, you know, personally, as very social creatures that we are, it is much easier to connect with something, especially an abstract entity, like your spirit guide, if you name it. My spirit guide's name is Amani. You're going to see here that as you connect with your spirit guide, and if you go to sleep saying, you know, please guide me, please guide me in my quest forward, please, you know, give me answers as I sleep, help me understand, you're going to see that the hardships, the pains, the disappointments, they, you start to kind of reason them out subconsciously. And I do know that with this full moon in Leo and with, you know, Mercury retrograde uh, starting on the 30th of January, this is an intense time. This is a time where it's like, oh my gosh, could you throw any more at me? Let your angels, let your spirit guides guide you forward. Because this has you stopping to swim against the current and let yourself go with the flow like a beautiful otter, you know, just embracing life, embracing what you love, embracing joy and your life. It brings you in unity with divinity, with your angels, with your spirit guides, an awareness of your subconscious, awareness of what is being thrown, thrown your way because Mercury retrograde brings us into, it's not into alignment with our subconscious, but brings our subconscious forward. And that's what we keep on tripping over all the time during, during Mercury retrograde. And it brings you here to the seven of pentacles, prosperity, success, and bounty, but you have to wait. And nobody wants to hear that at all. I totally understand. This is about patience. This is about saying, okay, you can have the fruit now. I always like to think of strawberries. When I was little, I remember my, yeah, I had a friend's mom or somebody like that. They, they had strawberries, but they weren't ripe. And so what she did was she cut them up and she covered them with sugar. And she was like, here you go. And I thought, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you can have strawberries whenever you want to. And they're not. And, you know, you don't have to wait for them to be ripe. And then I bit into them. And I can't tell you how disappointed I was. I love the sugary taste, but how hard and unflavorful those strawberries were was a huge disappointment that I remember from my childhood to now. So if you let the strawberries become ripe, 
If you let the fruit become ripe, divinity will bring you blessings that you hadn't thought of, you hadn't thought could be yours. This is saying you can pick, you can pick the blessings now. You can say my time, my way, or the highway. You really let the ego of the full moon in Leo come forward, knock you off your game, kind of take you out of your comfort zone. Sure. But if you sit there and let yourself go with the flow, let yourself embrace your dreams, you're going to find that divinity gives you blessings that you never even thought you wanted. You might find that you start heading down this path and you're like, huh, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know I wanted that. I didn't know that was an option for me. And then you start seeing the chaos, the chaos of the different ways that you're splitting yourself up in this life. Like, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. If only I could clone myself. You know, that can be something that you find yourself saying, if only I could clone myself, you know, then I'll be able to move forward the way that I want to. Then I'd be able to get everything done. This is also everybody pulling at you this way, that way. I want, I want, I want. This is looking and saying, what do I need? What do I need to be happy? What do I need to be successful? What do I need for me? And you're going to start to see that you're changing your mind, you're changing your life. You're changing what it is that you're focusing on. And it's bringing forward blessings that surprise you. They seriously surprise you. And so here we have the five of cups. It can be looking what this says is you're looking at the three of cups, everything that's spilt, everything that's gone wrong, everything that just can't be. And that was the pendulum pull that we saw here with the chakra cards. There's this huge swing of almost taking everything on as your fault. If only I could do better. If only I did better. If only I knew more. And here with the five of cups, you're going to find that this is a time where you need to release, where you need to say, I did my best. And there's also healing here. And your angels are pointing to it. There's healing, beautiful love that is coming forward for you, that is embracing into your life, that is opening up your soul, that is guiding you to a place that you need to be, body, mind, spirit, and self. And so here with the Five of Cups, it's saying, okay, you can beat yourself up for the rest of your life over where you have failed, you know, what you haven't done right. And people choose that living in the guilt of addiction, living in the, the failed relationship, living in the, the sorrows, the, the hurts, the pains, the not getting to where you want to be at the time you thought you should be there. Or you can sit there and say, I'm healing. I'm healing. And through connection with divinity, connection with the universe, connection with my spirit guides, connection with the divine power within me, the fact that stardust runs through my veins, I am greatness and I don't have to live in sorrow and hurt and doubt and fear anymore. I can rise. And that makes you a warrior. I mean, this isn't going to be a passive time for you. This is a warrior time and you're embracing your passion. You're embracing your determination. You're seeing yourself move forward. You're saying yes. Now, the funny thing is, is that you have the second fastest moving night here and you have the slowest moving night here. So your passion moves so much more quickly than you see things coming forward on the earthly plane. Frustration comes in? Absolutely. Do you conquer that fr frustration? Absolutely. And you start to see yourself moving forward with your passion being your guide. Saying, this is my heart. Excuse me. This is my heart. This is my truth. This is where I need to be. That passion leads you to being a king. That passion leads you to being a queen. That queen crowns your heart. This is saying, this is what gets me out of bed in the morning. I don't care what your fire is. Okay, divinity does not care what your fire is at all. They know that spark was set in your heart because they put it there. Absolutely. The queen of wands is passion, determination, fire, and truth. The queen of wands is saying, I'm not afraid to roll up my sleeves. You know, can be a little bit bossy at times, but absolutely determined to get to where it is that you want to be. And that's what you're going to feel like your passion is, your calling is. Now, it may not be that your calling gets to be what you do every day of your life, okay? Because that's just part of life. But it is saying here that you need to set time for it every single day to have this passion, have an outlet, to have a voice, to sit there and not think, oh, I'm being silly for liking this so much, saying, this is part of me, and this is a huge part of me that fuels the power, that fuels the passion of who I am and who I will become. 
And this moves you to celebration. This moves you to success. This moves you to new job opportunities, to new relationships coming forward, to, you know, kind of changing your whole mind and your whole outlook. And I know the world is weird right now. Absolutely. But there is a sense here of saying, of seeing the beauty beyond the storm and also putting yourself in alignment to call that beauty forward, to heal, to become, to embrace, to endure, to, to see. And that makes you fall in love. That makes you fall in love with the joy of your life, with the purpose of your truth, with the fact that your story isn't ending, it's just beginning. And you might sit there and say, Dane, come on. You know, I'm too old for my story to be beginning. You're never too old for a new chapter to come. And you have wisdom. Or you could say, I'm too young, or I'm too this, I'm too that. We have a million and ten excuses or reasons. But now it is time to let your fire shine. To not let yourself be pulled in the drama, oh, Pisces, don't do that. Because you can be pulled in the drama so easily, and you're just going to want to fix it. Or you're just going to sit there and say, how could that person be so manipulative? How could they have been so angry? You know, I talked to them before. They said one thing. Now they're doing the other. They see you as that light, as that shining force forward right here. And they're going to get jealous and say, I see this. I see you being a warrior. I see you, you know, obtaining your soul's desire. I see you getting what it is that you want. Even if you're not there yet, even if you don't see you doing that, others do. They're going to want to knock you off your game because the devil comes in and the devil is, is chaos. It's, you know, it's addiction. It's, it's all the bad things about us, you know, most definitely. So we give it the ideology of the devil. Now, back in ancient times, this was, this was nature. You know, the devil is a conglomerate of nature, nature gods and nature is simply chaos. It doesn't care. It's kind of like having to cut your grass, right? Or having to to pull the weeds out of the flower bed. It doesn't care that you, they, nature doesn't care that you only want certain sort of flowers to grow in a flower bed or that you only want the grass to grow this high. It takes over and it just does. Have you ever watched that show? I forget what it was, but it was like if civilization were to fall, how quickly would nature take over? And it was so fast. So here there's a natural chaos to life in existence. But this is the chaos to our lives and to our existence that we start to see as shekels, that we start to see as heartbreaks and, and failures that will never leave us, that will sit there and be our truth forevermore. You went down a wrong path. You made a wrong choice. Does that get to damn you forever? No, it doesn't. As you are embracing your truth, as you are looking at things, it's not about man's timing anymore. It just isn't. It's about the divine timing for you. It's about the powerful purpose of when things start to fall into alignment for you. And you've been through so much already, Pisces. It has been a long, hard road. And it's not too late. You know, we have the snake as the noose around the neck. There's, there's a hypothesis for why human beings' eyesight is so good. It's so that we could see the snake in the grass. We could see the poison coming for us that would seep in our veins and destroy us. But our world is very different. You know, we don't have to worry about snakes as much as we, we once did. So here, that poison gets into our veins very differently. It could be through negative words. It could be through chemicals. It could be through, you know, a myriad of different things. The broken heart that, you know, the relationship broke up in just the most nasty bio way. The person who tried to control you after saying that they loved you. This is what we're breaking out of when it comes to the devil. This is the vibrational level that wants to keep us broken and shattered and obsolete. And this is saying, I've learned too much. This is the darkness before the dawn. And you feel it within your heart that there's something more here. And you come to a conclusion. You also have this beautiful connection with the spirit world during this time. Somebody who has passed on in your, in your line, okay? 
Now, whether this be your spiritual line or whether this be your, your DNA line, it does not matter. They're calling forward your dreams. They're, they're reminding you not to forget yourself, not to give up on you. You're going to feel that very powerfully. You might feel like, wow, there's just a presence around me. Like, there's just this comfort around me. Or, wow, I'm having the most interesting dreams. And it's not just going to be your spirit guides. The darkness before the dawn. The hurt, the pain, the disappointment. The dying away of the old self. The rebirth of the new. The sense of, this is the change that I need. This is the change that I want. Is it comfortable? No, rebirth is never comfortable. Transformation is never comfortable. But it's here. And it shows that this is where you have trouble. Of course it is. The Ten of Swords. Ten Swords stabbed in your back. That's overkill. The Ten of Swords... I always wondered about it because it shows us overkill. Yes, that's rather obvious. But back when swords were used, and even, you know, in relatively modern times, people would go and collect the weapons after a battle. They were too valuable to just let go. Even now, they're too valuable just to let go. People go and collect them. Why would you leave ten swords in somebody's back? Is it a statement? Yes. But is it also that these swords were collected throughout time? And the statement is that who you once were, it doesn't exist anymore. It exists in the memory of you. But who you are now has changed because of everything that you have been through. The hurts, the pains, the disappointments, the angers, the upsets, the upheavals. And a wisdom has come forward that you didn't think of seeing. That you didn't think would come through all this pain. But the pain wasn't for nothing. We always look at blessings and they, they have to come pretty, right? They have to come pretty and tied in nice bows and just be absolutely lovely. Sometimes the greatest blessings we ever have in our lives, they come through the most horrific times we've lived through. They come through a darkness that you think, wow, it's never going to end, is it? It's been almost all my life that I've been struggling. How am I possibly going to rise? Because it's time, first of all. And because there's this fierceness to you. This determination, this charioteer. And we forget that back in ancient times, charioteers were like the, the best ones. They were the tanks of ancient times. They raced in coliseums. They were spectator sports. They were, they were fierce. They were powerful. They were skilled beyond belief. And brave beyond reason. And so here when you have the chariot ruling, crowning your inner self. Not your inner self, your public arena. And you have patience here. So you have patience because the fiery queen is claiming her throne. And you're moving forward in passion, power, determination, and in brilliance. You're going to find that there's something here that you thought wouldn't come. That you, you gave up on. That you, you turned your back to and said, oh, okay, maybe this was stupid. Maybe... Maybe I won't get to be this. And now you're going to see yourself driven forward in a way that brings dreams into reality, that makes passion a part of your soul, a part of yourself, that has this fierce, fiery nature to you. And you're going to think, oh, I'm just doing my thing. Nobody notices. People notice Pisces. During this time, people notice. And because this is the time where the drama is brought, this is the time where anger and resentment can kind of reign supreme because everybody wants to be center stage. People may not like it, may not like that they're seeing this passion, this power guiding you. So just be mindful of that. Just be mindful of why is that person, you know, being vindictive? I did nothing to them. It's because they feel threatened by you. It brings you then to the stars. The stars are blessings, joys, peace, prosperity, abundance. In ancient times, the stars were the highest forms of man's perfection. They looked up at the stars they guided their paths. They led their ships by them and their feet and their horses. They set the pyramids to the stars. The star is your greatest wish, your passion, your determination. The star is the sun. You know, our closest, our closest star is our sun. And that's what the moon reflects. So during this time, you are reflecting the wisdom, the truth, the passion, the power that you want. The dreams that you have. And here, you're going to let those dreams come forward. And this is you getting 
what you need. This is you getting what you desire. Not what you want, but what you need. Divinity starts to see the wishes of your soul, starts to align things, and you're moving forward with force. It brings you to prosperity. It brings you to bounty and abundance and a sense of slowly and steadily building a solid foundation. You may not think that it is a solid foundation. It is. To move off of, to gain power from, to also gain deeper ideas and ideals and, and truth. So here, you are moving forward. Slowly, steadily, determinedly. It brings you to bounty, abundance. It brings you to putting the crown on your head and seeing that you're not a mistake on this earthly plane that you are good enough to create a fortune. Now, a fortune does not have to be that you have more money in the bank that you, than you know what to do with. It's security, it's stability, it's comfort, it's joy. It's prosperity that guides you, that leads you, that embraces you. You're putting that crown on your head. You're crowning yourself with success. Here, you're crowned with passion and power and fire and, and ferocity. That was already done. Here you crown yourself. And now Pisces, there are times where you start to obtain what it is that you want, what it is that you've dreamed of, what it is that you've worked so hard for. And you'll start to think, oh no, oh no, I can't possibly. And even though Spirit had me say before that like, there's so much struggle here with, with poverty in, in so many other readings, but that's not coming up here. There is a sense of a struggle, not with the, not with feeling like an outsider, but it is feeling like an outsider. It's feeling like maybe I don't deserve this or maybe I've got it wrong or maybe they'll see I'm an imposter, but you don't, you're not on the outside of wealth here. You're walking through those doors. Don't turn around and walk out. Because this is wealth or something you value as much as money. And what you're going to see is that if you let yourself build the spark of passion and power and ferocity and fierceness and just, just stubborn brilliance and bounty, okay, part of the passion that lies within you, the beauty that lies within you, it will embrace your prosperity. It will move you forward in prosperity in a way that you hadn't imagined it would. And it will start to become part of your life. Even if it just starts changing your energy. Because all of a sudden, there's happiness. There's something to look forward to. Instead of the same old, same old. Instead of feeling overwhelmed and doubting yourself and questioning everything. So let's see what the moon has to say. How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Oh, goodness. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? How will Pisces be affected by the January 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading. So we have here resistance, and that's, that's beautiful because somebody has tried to, to squelch you, to sit there and, and take away the beauty. And they're annoyed. They are annoyed. There's somebody here or there's, there's something here where it's like it's either this like corruptive, you know, kind of devil energy you know, that wants you to vibrate lower, but they've tried to crush you, and you're just just keep on growing. You, you don't see it yourself, but there's a brilliance here. 
And there can be a person, it can be, you know, kind of an abstraction that is, that is just so frustrated by it. Keep on growing. Keep on growing. You have here attraction, resilience, your will, a fiery climax approaches, step out of your comfort zone. Look at the big picture. Adjustments are required. Meditation and contemplation. You, Pisces, as a new moon, as not the reflection of the sun, but as simply the void and the vastness of you. So we have here resistance. You've resisted being brought down by the chaos of the world. Have patience. It comes in divine timing. I know nobody wants to hear that. I don't like hearing that. But have patience because you keep on growing. Even though you expect more from yourself and more from yourself, you're growing in a brilliant, powerful, beautiful way. You're starting to attract to yourself what you need. It's kind of like the law of attraction. And I know people laugh at the law of attraction and say, oh, I just start to believe it and then it happens. Well, believing something starts to change things. It does. Because your mind does not know the difference between make-believe and reality, what you imagined and what is. So here with attraction, as you forgive yourself for the pain, the hardships, disappointments that you have been through, the failures that you have walked through, as you embrace the healing from your angels, from divinity, from your spirit guides, you start to attract the future that you want, the passion that you have, the power that you need. And it brings you to taking off your world tree. And I do know that, that in mythology, there is only one world tree. But whenever I look at this card, this is your world tree. This is your truth. This is the world that you are creating for yourself, the power, the knowledge. And you're moving forward in passion and in, in determination, and you're putting down roots. It's all fine to have what you've given your life to carried on your back, but you're always going to be carrying it. You're always going to be weighed down by it. Let it grow. Set down roots. It doesn't mean that you have to be in the place that you're always going to be in, but set down roots in the power of your truth, in the passion of your understanding, in the brilliance that is you, because your will is astounding. It is astounding. Your will to succeed. Stop doubting yourself. Your fire, your celebration, let joy come forward. A fiery climax approaches. There is something here where you're going to butt heads, okay, with chaos, despair, despondency, and take back your life. A fiery climax approaches. It brings you to stepping out of your comfort zone, the darkness before the dawn, the rebirth, the changing of self, the power of self. It brings you to taking aim. Take aim. Look at the bigger picture. See what it is that you want and charge forward. Embrace, embrace what you deeply desire. And don't think it's silly and don't think it's nonsense. Think it's you. You get to be you. Not what everybody else expects. Adjustments are required. As you move forward, slowly and steadily, as you build this more powerful foundation, adjustments are going to be required. You're going to have to rethink certain things. It brings you, in the end, to meditation and contemplation, to connecting with your inner self, Pisces, with the new moon in Pisces, with yourself, as you claim your throne, as you go after your dreams, as you embrace your truth. It brings you to your subconscious chakra message, which is creativity, the sacral chakra. The sacral chakra is where we hold a lot of negativity from this life, from this life and from past lives. So here it is breaking the generational curses, okay? It is breaking the karmic debts. It's sitting there and saying, I am enough. I am powerful. I am truthful. I am glorious within myself. And I embrace the abundance that is me. And the creativity starts coming forward because this is where our creative energy is held. And this is also where our sexual energy is held. So there is like this, this surge of life through you. Embrace it. Use it. Contemplate with it. Meditate with it. Explore it. Explore the passion that is you, the creative energy that is you, and let it guide you forward. It brings you to your subconscious Luna message, which is hunger, the wolf moon. This moon is your moon. 
This is the wolf moon. So here, you hunger for the song of your truth. You hunger for your territory to be acknowledged. You hunger for your pack mates. You hunger for this truth, this power, this brilliance that starts now. And it brings you then to go deeper into your subconscious, to the full moon in Gemini. It says the answers you need are coming. What you seek comes for the sacred masculine side of you and the sacred feminine. That knowledge comes forward and it transforms you brilliantly. The answers that you need are going to come forward in very interesting ways and not the ways that you're expecting. So do be mindful of that. And finally, your subconscious tarot message is the king of swords. This is you. This is you being a warrior. You are a warrior during this time. You place the crown on your head. You arm yourself with your truth, your knowledge, your power, your determination. Because the sword was forged. Didn't spirit have me say, the sword is forged, is being forged. And now you take it. And now you rule with truth, determination, fire, and abundance. You are a warrior king. Nothing and no one will stand in your way. Do not let them. All right, Pisces. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as you take aim, as you have resisted being crushed, being silenced, and you start to attract the bounty and the beauty, the abundance and the, the wealth that you want within your life. It's time to set down roots. It's time to embrace your truth and let nobody else stand in your way. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces, and may you have a blessed moon.